I ain't afraid of no ghost stories. I am afraid of not having ghost stories. That's my unfinished business. Nobody would tell me their ghost stories, and now I have to walk this earth being a cold spot. Luckily, I have this ghost of a campfire with me to listen to your ghost story, because that's what we want from all of you for our Creepy Christmas Haunted Hanukkah December episode. We want you to send us your ghost stories that happened in Los Angeles County and send them to us. You can email them to us, la.meekly at gmail.com, Twitter, Instagram, la underscore meekly. Give it. I want it. We want your ghost story, something spooky, ghosty that happened to you in Los Angeles County, and we'll read it on the air, and we'll tell you how unlikely it was that that actually happened to you. Yeah. You know what I really want is ghost stories that happen on the county line. So send them to us. We want it. Bye. A song before we listen to music? I don't understand. Everything's falling apart here. A truncated version of a theme song before song songs? A song to introduce a song? Is this a parade? Well, if we must, da 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 da. Um, or would you rather we rapped? Um, da 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 da. Well, my name, my name is Podcast, and I'm here to say. It's white boy scatting. Yeah, it's we're pod scatting. <laughs> but look, there's music everywhere, and that's because this is another Meekly Music Box. It's our October Meekly Music Box. This is a... It's not quite scary. It'll get a little scary at the end, but we'll get to that. You're going to be terrified by the end of this track. Yeah. I, I find organ music to be kind of spooky, but, you know, in a fun way. Uh, sometimes it'll pop up in 96 Tears, and you're like, is this spooky? Or like My Little Runaway, you're like, is this spooky? Sometimes it's the old haunted theater. Yeah, is it spooky or lowrider? <laughs> Our favorite game we like to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned it's an organ. That's because this week we've got a different sort of musical artist, or this month, rather. Yeah. But it is there is a week in this month. It's a kind who doesn't have albums, because you're required to see this particular artist live. And or should I say dead? Hollow October. You have to see him live. Um, I think that now that everything is streaming and everything is so accessible online, I think being able to go see something that can only be seen live is the value of that is starting to... Yeah. to rise and i'm getting very excited and they i saw rise. this i saw this gentleman not too long ago a bob baker show in well September. let's say whoa 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 right, let's not get ahead right. of ourselves but this young gentleman that you speak of who is not that much younger than me but his name is edward torres who is the former mighty Wurlitzer organist at the el segundo old town music hall and current organist at greg's bob's baker <laughs> bob's big boys bob baker marionette theater so he's the current organist there. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that Bob's Big Boy actually bought Bob Baker's Marionette Theater, and it's a subsidiary. Bob's Big Boy bought Bob Baker? <laughs> I'm going to shut my computer down. I'll do it. It's only two buttons. Don't tempt me. <laughs> so, uh, like we said, he doesn't have albums or anything. Yeah. This is a live performer, but he did make a couple of recordings just for us for this show. So, the first track you're going to hear him play, Paramount on Parade, which is what he plays at the beginning of every performance to let people know the show is about to begin. And then also September in the Rain. And then we'll talk about him a little more after. So, here's Edward Torres playing Paramount on Parade and September in the Rain.
And that was Edward Torres. Playing Paramount on Parade and September in the Rain. A lot of people don't know that November Rain has a prequel. Uh, well, this is a pre-prequel. A pre-prequel. Where's the October in the Rain? Here we are. <laughs> Right now. Oh my God. Yeah, it's pouring outside yeah. <laughs> in Los Angeles. In between songs, he plays just some like snippets of some classics, just that kind of yeah. transition things. Like we were, you were saying, if you haven't seen him play live, that you're like missing out on yeah. an essential LA experience. Truly. I've only seen him at the Old Town Musical. I haven't seen him at Bob Baker yet, but he was great. He was so good, especially with the giant app. Like he, he sent a picture of what he plays at Bob Baker and it's big, but like the Old Town Musical thing was like overwhelmingly like the curtains were rising and like oh my king kong like it's so big yeah and grand and silly I, I love that organ so much we went with our comedy parents chris and cindy to see the fiesta show me and ada went with them to uh the fiesta show they had at bob baker and uh he was there as we were sitting down and i just couldn't keep my eyes off of him well, uh, that's because we've always had the biggest crush on him in the we, world. But he, ooh, ooh, we kind of have. We kind of have. Like yeah. we've always wanted him to be a part of the show somehow. So I'm, I'm really excited that this is how we got. Like we got to use the best part. Well, I want to say the best parts of him, but <laughs> we get to use his music, which is what we know him for. Yes. I don't know him as a person, but I like him as a musician. That's for sure. And that counts for a lot. <laughs> Because yeah. we'll let musicians abuse us. We'll let them talk down to yeah. us. It's fine. You're a musician. I mean, if you like someone as a musician, show me one example in history <laughs> where that musician has turned out to be a bad person. After the small communication you had with him, I'm like, oh, this is why I used to be angry. Like, girls are always dating guys in bands. Like, what's up with that? Now, like meeting a musician, I'm like, oh, it makes sense. Because they're cool. Because they're cool. They're just cooler than everybody else. Just like the answers to the questions I was asking him, he sounds like a really nice guy. So look, look Greg. We've heard his music. Let's hear his mouth music now, a meaning his words. It's scatting. Okay. <laughs> it is a pod scat tonight. So. And pod scat to you. His first line is, well, my name is Edward Torres. And <laughs> since we were doing the rap, my, I was about to go. And he's here to say what? My organ music is what I play. <laughs> he says, I was born and raised here in Los Angeles. And I play a rather unusual instrument, the theater organ, which I called it a mighty Wurlitzer, yeah. which I'm sure that there's like like some particular reason why I'm wrong to call it that, that he could straighten out for me. There's going to be a knock on the door and you're going to open it. Someone's <laughs> going to take your boater hat off and then punch their hand through it and then hand it back to you. My name's Edward Torres and I'm here to say, <laughs> you're wrong. You are wrong today. Good day. Good day. You are wrong. wrong good good day. day. So he said, I started off with piano lessons when I was eight years old and eventually started playing the organ about 13 years wow. ago when I was 13. It was around this time when I started going to the famed LA landmark Old Town Music Hall in El Segundo and met Bill Field. The legend, Bill the legend. Field. All right, Bean. We, in our um, one of the early pandemic episodes where we talked about things that are in danger. Yeah. So we talked I about think. Old Town Music Hound, Old Town Music Hound, Bob <laughs> Baker. Old Marianne. Town Music Hound. <laughs> yeah. You know the one. It's like Huckleberry <laughs> Hound's cousin. <laughs> Because we did Old Town Music Hall and Bob Baker, and Correct. we talked all about Bill Field, and we talked about Edward in that episode, and yeah, now he, he's got a finger in both of them. Bill, He said that Bill Field never wanted to say he taught me how to play, but he would say he would nudge me in the right direction. The Music Hall was originally started by the two Bills, Bill Kaufman and Bill Field, back in 1968. Bill Kaufman had already passed on when I started coming by the Music Hall, and so Field would allow me to play the organ on occasion for my own amusement. When I was about 18, I met my first theater organ and teacher, a gentleman by the name of Tony Wilson, and he's here to say, uh, <laughs> I will teach you how to play. Um, <laughs> he also grew up in LA. That also built- rhymed, you know that, right? You're aware that they, when you talk too much about a musician, you become a musician. You know that, right? Uh, I can only fathom two <laughs> rhymes in a row. A third rhyme, I don't even know. I guess I'm a poet and I didn't realize. I guess I'm a poet and I'm here to say... <laughs> Now rhyme iambic pentameter. <laughs> he also grew up in LA and Bill allowed us to have lessons at the music hall on Saturday mornings before the show. True to the nature of Bill Field's kindness and generosity, he allowed me to have lessons with Tony at the theater, just as Bill allowed Tony to have lessons with his teacher some 40 years before on the same organ. That's pretty cool. Bill had also taken Tony under his wing all those years ago, and eventually Tony went on to be a true theater organist, playing in theaters, pizza.
pizza parlors and eventually became a concert musician. Bill Field and Kaufman were always encouraging of younger up and coming organists and they were always happy to open their doors to anyone who would be interested. I remember asking Bill about why he was so generous with his time and the space with younger musicians and his generosity stemmed from the fact that when Field was younger and he would want to play an organ in a church or theater somewhere, many times he was turned away rather rudely by those in charge because he was just a kid and told him to come back when he was a professional. Wow. Which is what a good thing for a church to <laughs> say. Come back when you're God. <laughs> <laughs> come back when you're Beethoven, all right? Come back when you're Mozart, Salieri. <laughs> Until then, kick rocks. What a good stance. Bill always remembered how that felt and never wanted anyone to feel like that ever again. So when the two Bills had the organ and the theater, he made it a point to have it accessible to younger musicians who wanted to learn the ways of the mighty Wurlitzer. In reality, many of the top theater organists had come through the doors of Old Town when they were younger. After Tony passed away, suddenly Bill again decided to take me under his wing and continue my education in the theater organ. And eventually I was good enough to fill in for Bill on occasion when he couldn't play for shows that's what like when we were going there like the first couple times we were there it was bill but the times after that as bill got a little older it was edward it was like always edward i think the last two times i went for sure it was edward i think bill maybe was there kind of popped in and out but I think yeah I, he'd I, like I, greet people and then yeah. be like check out this kid yeah and he's here to say <laughs> He, oh, he's here to play. He didn't even have to... Yeah. When I was 21, I took over all playing responsibilities at the music hall as Bill's health declined. So that was five years ago. If he's 26 now, that okay. was five years ago. So that makes sense. So he was playing just about every single weekend throughout the year. During this time, I had become known as Bill's protege, and it is something I still take very seriously. It was at this time I was still a full-time student at Santa Monica College, so balancing my schoolwork and Old Town responsibilities could be fun, but also lots of hard work. Bill Bill had shown me a very specific style of playing that really isn't around anymore. What I mostly play nowadays are tunes that span from the 1900s through the 1960s, lots of show tunes and popular tunes from that era. Towards the end of the pandemic closure, I had heard that another historic LA landmark, the Bob Baker Marionette Theater, was reopening their doors. I knew they had an organ installed in their theater, and since I was no longer at Old Town Music Hall at this point, I decided to ask if they would be interested in having me play there as people walked in to find their seats. Our opening day was in July of last year, 2021, and I'm again able to bring the theater organ to families that come through that may have not heard a theater organ otherwise. In keeping with the traditions instilled in me by Bill, I try and play for as many school field trips we have at the theater to try and educate future generations about the theater organ. And during our regular shows, I try and answer as many questions as people have about the organ when I finish playing. The most heartwarming thing for me is to see kids and their parents dancing to my music as they wait for the show to start and many times the kids would come right up to the organ and just watch in amazement at all the buttons and switches and my hands and feet that's you and me we stand next to kids that are, are do not belong to us just to yeah. be like yeah yeah my son has a question but as know, we're but... doing a waltz to his music <laughs> and we're standing next to all these four-year-olds my son has a question what are you doing with your feet they usually come back after the show to ask questions and i would ask them if any of them had had any piano lessons before for those that say yes i usually have them on the organ bench and a matter of seconds and they get a chance to try their hand at the colossal organ which is really big we'll, we'll post yeah. the picture it's huge it's staggering like it, it's kind of not a joke it's like phantom of the paradise <laughs> kind of organ <laughs> oh yeah and edward torres has half a face i forgot to we didn't we, we usually don't say what the what the people look like on music yeah. buck but i feel obliged to say yeah. that he is a phantom yeah the phantom of the opera and the paradise <laughs> in the beginning i wasn't too sure how the audiences at bob baker would take to having live organ music as they wait for the show to begin, but it has become quite popular. Many times our patrons arrive early to find their seats just to be able to hear the organ. I've adapted my music to include songs from the marionette shows, and occasionally we have special events where there is a marionette act and I background with the organ music. Historically speaking, I don't think there ever has been a partnership of theater organ and marionettes before, but what a match made in heaven. Yeah, truly. Yeah, the, the type of organ he plays and, and all this is like perfect for both old time music and, and Bob Baker 
or Marion, which we probably said in the episode. It was like they're related. And I know this music is the thing that relates the two. Well, I wrote down later on that this is LA history fan fiction come to life. <laughs> like this is this is what we have dreamed of. Really? Yeah. So the music on the recording was very uh, that you heard and you're going to hear was very much the same that he would play at Bob Baker. It's another slowly lost art form of playing the house in or playing the house out that is associated with theater organs. This sort of style was something that originated back in the 1930s and 40s when theater organists still needed a job playing music, but were no longer needed to play for silent movies. So I guess oh. you like entry and exit music for people. Now that the movies had their own soundtrack, many theater managers at this point thought it would be a good idea to have the organist play before a show or end it so that patrons wouldn't suddenly feel like they were walking into a mortuary with no background music. <laughs> As one old time organist put it, their job was to perfume the air with music. That's very nice. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. And also spooky, but yeah. Look, the spooky part is not here yet. You can't keep <laughs> jumping to the spooky part. So just to finish up what he had to say, uh, that's what his job is now at Bob Baker. Audiences are being entertained either by music or marionettes the second they walk into the theater all the way until their feet touch the sidewalk on the way out of the show. Luckily for me, my time spent mentoring under Bill Field at the Old Town Music Hall has made me pretty flexible for this type of work. Yeah, it's just a perfect pairing. Yeah. Like his, his, what an honor it is that we uh, are now associated with him, like someone who plays plays the organ so well and also is a really nice guy. Yeah. And I'm very happy that we're using this to introduce people to him that maybe wouldn't have known him otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. You go down to the Bob Baker Theater and like as soon as you can and listen to him play because he's it's as you've already heard. It's like he's uh, look, I'll sp- let's get to the spooky, Greg. In the next part of the recording you're about to hear, it's going to tie into Halloween. Yes. And he is going to play not all, but part of of the Haunted Mansion song. You mentioned this last week that he played it. I thought, that sounds fantastic. Got it. In my head, I'm listening to it, fully aware that that's how this recording is going to end. And still, when I got to that part, I was like, on my feet, giddy like a little kid. It's unreal. Yeah. Like it's the, it's not just like, oh, he's doing a cover. Like this sounds like the definitive version of the Haunted Mansion yeah. song. Like it's perfect. Unfortunately, when he was doing the recording, he got interrupted uh-huh. and had to do his actual job. So it's just a taste of what you will be hearing at the Bob Baker Theater. Yes. But it just sounds so good. Like It really does. And it has that like old timey feel plus the Disney quality of it. Like it made me actually consider, do I want to spend $2,500 to buy a general admission ticket to Disneyland? No, Greg, you could go to the Bob Baker Theater instead for a fraction of the price. For a fraction. (laughs) One 116th of the price. (laughs) So look, go to the Bob Baker Theater, check him out. As for us, you can listen to our regular show on the first of the month where we talk about Los Angeles history. It's usually not about music, but it is always about the Haunted Mansion. (laughs) (laughs) Somehow it's always about something that sits in Orange County. So now, like we were saying, to take us out. So you're going to hear two more songs from Edward. The first thing he's going to play, I Can't Give You Anything But Love. And then, like we said, Haunted Mansion song that's going to cut off, so don't be angry, but it's the perfect tease. Graham Courtney goes, come on, do, 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 da, 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 the grim grinning ghosts and i'm here to say <laughs> i'm gonna scream and you'll run away <laughs> oh, god i should be a halloween themed rapper you you that's what we don't have the monster mash rap yeah we, we need the monster that. rap yeah the monster rap yeah the monster dougie the mummy rap Fun. Look, this Zoom is about to time out, so we got to wrap this up. Enjoy the rest of Edward Torres's music. Enjoy the rest of October. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And we're here to stay. <laughs> <laughs>